Well, good morning, everybody. Isn't it fun to gather together and experience heaven? Oh. Well, I, uh, I thought I had figured out what I was going to do, and I, I had a title and everything picked out, and it was, it was going to be real simple, and it was, was going to be called Baptism. And it was going to confuse everybody. But uh, then, then uh, yesterday morning, I woke up, and God, he showed something to me, and then I just kind of threw a monkey wrench into the whole thing, but it was a good monkey wrench. <laughs> I think that's a, that's a real thing. And uh, I uh, went with Jesus is the standard. Um, I'm just going to get this over with right away. So you all can look at it for a little bit. Boom. The other one. Yeah, can everybody see that? It's, it's a bun. I picked it up at Dick's this morning. It's, it's fresh. <laughs> 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 but yeah, God, God uh, man, I woke up the other morning and it was kind of like when I was half asleep yet or whatever and then God showed me this, so I'm just, I'm just going to go with it. So, so yeah, I, uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you about, uh, I, some of you have heard this story, I'd, it's just kind of a weird thing that happened and sometimes uh, your perception can uh, really mess with you. Uh, Shara and I got invited by my mom and dad to go to... Uh, the, the MOA, you ever been to Nickelodeon's universe? They got all the rides and stuff. Well, all the kids were going or whatever, and uh, so um, it was kind of last minute, but Mom invited Cher and I up there, and so we went up, and, and it was a lot of fun. We rode with the kids and stuff, and, and uh, some, of the, some of the rides aren't necessary. Like, like I, I, I've done a lot of crazy stuff on like a four-wheeler and a dirt bike and stuff, but I'm in control of that. And I, you know, it didn't bother me as much. But on a roller coaster or something, even though it's on a track, a lot of these different rides, I'm not in control of it. It just, I'm just on it. And it can really freak me out. Even, even rides that other people are like, you're kidding me, right? Like that, no, I'm like, no, I'm not really cool with this. Well, they got this one that Shara talked me into going on. And, it, and uh, it's called... Uh, uh, the Avatar Airbender. Is it, I don't know, whatever happened, like, why can't we just call it a, a skateboard? Because it looks like a skateboard. But, but, <laughs> but it's called the Avatar Airbender, and, and it, 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 it looks like, uh, on a, it's, it looks like a skateboard on a railroad track that goes in kind of a U shape, and it goes beyond 90 degrees. It's slightly, slightly back over to the wrong way. And it's like 70 feet in the air, which I don't know why they would ever build it that tall, but that's how high it gets. And when you are on that thing, you're on, the, you're on these seats that spin while this thing is going back and forth. And, uh, and, and, and so, as, well, if you happen to be on the seat that spins and ends up right at the top, it looks, it feels like you're going right through the glass, like through the ceiling of the building, just whoop, and all of a sudden the thing is rocketing up and all of a sudden, it just, they, like, they got into the mathematics of it and somehow figured out with uh, uh, Einstein's theories of relativity how exactly gravity and your, your momentum and everything, like when that thing is coming up there and all of a sudden it's coming to a stop, your relation to gravity and momentum all of a sudden makes you feel weightless for about a second. And you feel like you're going to come right out of your seat. And I, I started questioning in my mind whether or not this, this uh, you know, whatever you want to call it, thing that's holding me in is going to work. I was like, whoa. And I, this thing just like snaps you poof, and starts heading right back down and I'm freaking out. And I look over to the seat next to me to check on Sharon. There's just an empty seat there. <laughs> and I freaked out. I was like, ah! And I looked the other way and I was like, oh, there you are. She was there the whole time. I just looked the wrong way. <laughs> Even now, she's looking at me like, come on. 
<laughs> but seriously, it took me like 15 minutes to get over that. I was like messed up for about 15 minutes. I was like, I went through like, it's amazing how fast your mind can just take over. I seriously started to think like, man, what am I going to, I don't have a wife anymore. She's dead. I'm going to, like, I'm a widower. Like, I don't even do, do I call myself that? I'm a widower? I was like, shrew, you're here. Yes. I'm a married man. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, <laughs> we'll come back to that, but, but we're here today to celebrate something awesome, to, to take part in something awesome. And it's not because it's juice and crackers, it's because of what it represents. The reason I was going to call the other one baptism is because baptism also is something that's really awesome. And it's because of what it represents. It's not the water. I've got, it, who all went to the baptism? It, yeah. Who all has been baptized? Yeah. Woo! Man, that's exciting. Yeah, I've, I've gone down to the bottoms. I've swam in that water. It's just water. It's all it is is water. But when you get baptized, it represents something. You know, when, if, I mean, if you really think about it, it's cool because... When you get baptized, you just surrender yourself. It's a, it's a posture of surrender, and you get dipped down into the water, and you don't, like, scrub yourself off or anything. You, you get dipped into the water, and you, get, you don't swim back to the surface. You get brought back up out of the water, which is how your salvation is. You just surrender yourself. You realize you can't do it on your own, and you surrender yourself to Jesus and what he did, and he's the one who did the work. He's the one who has the finished work, and you just accept it. It's awesome. And in the same way, Jesus, you know, co- uh, uh, LCU this year, uh, first class was covenant, so it really worked out well for me. I was studying covenants and stuff. And, and uh, one thing that I never realized about covenants is that, like, in the Old Testament, they talk about eating and stuff a lot. Like, they, like Jacob and Laban, they, they built a pile of rocks. They were making a covenant between this, this pile of rocks will stand as a sign between me and you that we have this agreement. And, and then they, I don't know if he sounded like that, but I was just... I wanted to make sure that you knew that wasn't me, that was Jacob. <laughs> but, but, they, uh, but then they, and then it said they ate together. I was just like, well, they were hungry. But, but no, when they ate together, it was actually a symbol of, like, you're taking of me and I'm taking of you, and then the two of them became, like, one. They were, like, in a, a covenant agreement. The, everything that Laban had became available to Jacob. Everything that Jacob had became available to Laban. It was an agreement. Well, kind of like when we, when uh, even even now in our modern culture, we still have remnants of that. Like we don't acknowledge it that way anymore. But like when we get married, everybody gets together and eats. We have a wedding feast. We call it a reception now. Well, in in a way, it's you have representatives. The bride and the groom are representatives, but the whole family comes together and eat together, and two families become one. And thank God we don't move in together or anything. But we. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus but Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh to be our representative and he got together with his disciples on the night before he was betrayed and, and uh, shared a meal with them and, and in so doing was he was saying I want, I, want to ta- I want you to become me and I'm going to take you and I'm going to be your representative and I'm going to go make a deal with God and we're going to we're going to cut a covenant and you're going to be the beneficiary of it. And everything that I am is going to be available to you. So in, uh, in Romans 5.12, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, and the death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. Adam was our representative. We were all in Adam. And when he, when he fell, when he, when he chose to eat the fruit, when he chose basically to make his own way in life, we all, we all were in him. He was our representative. We, are, we, we were all a member of the Adams family. <laughs> I stole that from, from Jim Hockaday. <laughs> but... <laughs> Now, in order to get out of the Adams family, I'm just going to go to the next verse. We're going <laughs> to Romans six, three and four. 
Or, you, or do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus have been baptized into his death? Therefore, we have been buried with him through baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, so we too might walk in newness of life. Jesus came as the last Adam. And he took Adam and Adam's family to the grave. It was, as our representative, he ended the Adam. We no longer have to be a part of the Adam's family anymore. We can be a part of God's family. And, uh, well, so, okay, I want to just, this here, Bun. I'm sorry, Bun. We, I want you to, uh, I want you to see this as your representative. And, and, I want you to project, like, is anybody going, or going, dealing with anything, like, you know, life just seems like it's got it out for you? I mean, I'm, I'm going to be real, I, 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 I'm a human being in a fallen world, and I deal with stuff all the time. It don't mean, it don't mean that, that that stuff defeats me, I'm not, you know, it, you, in, in admitting that, you're not saying that you're defeated, or you're, it's not a bad confession. The, the world come at you all the time, but... But you don't have to be subjected to it. You're not subjected to it. So I just want you to see sickness, disease, sin, addictions, whatever. I mean, all pretty much can be just lumped in. That's what the, in, in, in Romans 5, where it was talking about at, uh, we, uh, we, we had not sinned in the likeness. Well, where did it go? There, therefore, just as through one man sin entered into the world, sin there is a noun. And it's referring to all of this lumped into one word, not the verb. So I just want you to project all of that, see all of that go on that bun. Just put it on that bun in your mind. Just for a visual representation, I want you to put that on that bun. Is it there? Is it, you, got, you got it there? All right. It's just, it's, <laughs> this, this is your problems. Crushed. Broken. They have no power. It died. It died. In, in, order, in, order for, in order for that to have any power over you, you have to be an Adam. But you're not an Adam anymore because you now are in covenant relationship with Jesus. You're a member of Jesus' family. This here, that, we're going, going to the title, Jesus is the standard. Jesus is the, sta Jesus is the standard of this. Jesus is standing behind this saying that you have newness of life. The standard of that is broken. It's dead. There is nothing backing this up. Anything that comes against you, it's just, like, it's like, it's like paper money. Paper money is supposed to have a gold standard standing behind it saying this is good. That does not have any standard behind it. It doesn't, it isn't good. So you don't have to deal with it. So 1 Corinthians 11. Twenty-six. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This, that verse really confused me. I was like, well, what, why wouldn't I, like, why, why would I, like, what, what's, what's the point in that? But then when I saw yesterday morning, saw myself breaking that bread, it made sense to me. We're proclaiming to the world that we are dead to the world, that it, that it has no hold on us. We are, remember, we are citizens of heaven, that we don't belong to, the, it, it, doesn't, it doesn't have any hold. One thing that one thing that really, um, really stood out to me, like when I was, well, back, well, pff, Pastor Paul said something to me about this a while ago, so I was like, right away, freak out moment. Okay, God, what am I gonna say? I don't know. What. And one thing that he really said was, what what was what what was it that Jesus said numerous times? It, like when he said, when he gave him the, when he broke the bread, gave it to him, he says, "Do this in remembrance of me, as often you eat it." And then and then when he gave the when he gave the cup, he's like, do this in remembrance of me as often you drink it. In remembrance. Well, what's remembrance? Well, remembrance, we can think of it as, oh, just thinking about him or whatever, but it's actually like, like a renewing of the, reestablishing yourself. you re, renewing of your vows. You just, you're reestablishing myself. When Shara and I were on that ride, I got looking the wrong way. That life can get flipping you around and twirling and you can get looking in the wrong direction. But this is just, I'm looking back and I'm reestablishing myself with who I am, my identity in Christ. I am married. I'm married to God. 
I'm in a covenant relationship with God, and I'm standing on that. I'm, it's, it's nothing new, but I'm reestablished in it. Well, we're just, we're going to have the ushers uh, bring you up. <laughs> what? <laughs> Here at Liberty, we don't, we don't, we, or it, you don't have to be a member of this church in order to, in order to do this. We believe that you do, you should be a member of the body of Christ. So, and, and one thing, he ta- it talks about, in, I forget even where it is, but it talks about he has predestined us. He has predestined us to a life with him, uh, to, to reconciliation, and well, I, man, there were some times when I would really look at that and be like, well, what? what? But predestined, God had a, a plan originally. Uh, oh, he had a will for you to be in relationship with him. He wants to hang out with you. He wants to be a part of your life. He wants to help. You know what? When I was a kid, I used to tell my sister Katie. I, I used to tell her how much I wanted to move out and how much I wanted to be on my own. I was just excited. I wanted to go make my own way. I wanted to go out and just be me. And then when I got out on my own and I found out what the world was like and just how much it demanded of me, I called my siblings back up and I was like, you enjoy it while you can because this sucks. <laughs> Man, there's bills to pay and there you can't. Sometimes things are so confusing you don't know how you're going to handle it. And I tell you what, what a relief to find out that God don't want me to have to deal with it on my own. He wants to take care of me. He wants to supply all my needs. He wants to be in my life. He wants me to be assured that he loves me. And he wants the same for you. He doesn't show any partiality. He, he loves all of us. He loves you just that way. You know, and I, when I say, when I encourage you to accept the free gift that Jesus gave, I'm not trying to do this so that I can go home and write down in a little notebook a check mark and be like, look, got another one, God, you know. No. I want, this is, this, I'm, I'm up here because God is real. He's real, and he loves you, and it's real. And I want you to be able to go home and go, oh, my gosh, you love me. Oh, my gosh, you're real, and I want you to experience that. So I just encourage you to just, all of us together, we're just going to pray this prayer together and accept what Jesus has done, this marriage, his supply, him, him working in your life, and you're not alone. You're not alone. Father in heaven, we just, we just thank you for, for your gift. We just thank you. And just repeat after me. Jesus, thank you. Thank you for what you did. I receive what you did. I open my heart. I open my life. I let you into all of it. Thank you for making yourself real to me. Holy Spirit, I receive you into my life. Thank you for helping me. Make yourself real to me every day I live. In Jesus' name, amen. Hello? Hey, it's on. I turned it off in the first service. I muted it. So I figured I better double check. Before we, before we take the bread, I want to I wanna just lay out a little illustration, too. When we, when, we, when we chew on this, we're chewing on our identity because we are the body of Christ. So just chew on that in your mind. Chew on that, that you are, that his identity, you are in him, he is in you. Father, we just thank you. Thank you for the body. Jesus, thank you for your sacrifice, for your body broken for us. Thank you for deliverance. Thank you for freedom, newness of life. Thank you. Hold up the cup. You know, this is how simple it is. There is no working 
to get it. It's just receiving it. It's just drinking it in. <laughs> Father, thank you for the free gift. Thank you for your love displayed, demonstrated on the cross. You know, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you. Thank you for the blood. Thank you for forgiveness. Thank you for, for your presence Jesus' name.